ground zero. Edward Norton is one of those rare Hollywood commodities. He's an overnight success. So here's his deal. Unknown young actor steals the show in his first major film. It was called Primal Fear, and he played a psychotic altar boy. I have his past. First big role, Norton got himself an Oscar nomination for that. Not bad. My baby's not much for sports. Next up, Woody Allen casts him as Drew Barrymore's love interest in Everyone Says I Love You. From there, he goes on to play a gambler with problems in rounders. What are you, 22? 27. An uptight lawyer in The People versus Larry Flint. He's doing favors for that And a neo-Nazi skinhead with the redemption story in the brilliant film American History X. You think Bush and Cheney didn't know about that shit? You throw in Spike Lee's 25th Hour, Fight Club, Hello, Death to Smoochie, and you've got one of the great leading character actors of this generation. Well, that sounds a little extreme. Norton also keeps busy with charitable work he does for, oh, the Solar Neighbors, Enterprise Foundation, the Grand Canyon Trust, Earth Justice, trust me, this list goes on and on and on. This guy is one star, determined to keep his feet on the ground. And his latest film is called The Painted Veil. It opens across Canada on January 12th. Here's a clip. Honestly, I don't understand you. What, what is it that you want from me? Perhaps I just want us to be a little less unhappy. You're mistaken in thinking that I'm unhappy. I have far too much to do here to think of you very much at all. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. I feel useless. What do you propose that I do about that? For God's sakes, Walter, will you stop punishing me? Do you absolutely despise me? No, I despise myself. There he is, Edward Norton. How are you? Nice to meet you, thanks. Things are all right? Very well, yeah. All right, uh, how do you get to this script in this movie? Because you guys were clearly more than just actors in it. Yeah, uh, actually, Ron Nicewanner, who wrote it, gave it to me nearly seven years ago. So um, I've been on it quite a while. It's an interesting role to choose because it's, you know, I mean, it's an understated performance in a sense, but it's not really an understated man. I didn't think it was anyway. Well, he's, um, he's kind of one of those guys who I think he appears to be buttoned up and maybe n not to have emotions that run that deep but then the thing that's interesting mm -hmm. about it is the is the way that the depth of his feelings keep getting revealed as it goes and um, um, he, he he ends up emerging as a much much more dynamic person mm -hmm. than he seems to be on initial encounter. Do you have to do a lot of work to get into that role, or was that closer to who you were? Um, you know, it's funny you say that. I don't, there's lots of times I get drawn to things that are that are very exotic to my experience. I mean, you know. Um, you weren't exactly a Nazi in your yeah, regular life. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> skinhead, um, white power, and things like that. I wasn't really drawing on my own experience, but. Um, um, there were things about this. Naomi and I talked about it a lot because she she felt the same. But there were things about this that, for both of us, I think, hit a little closer to home than maybe normal. I, I did find myself referring to my own experiences more than more than I have sometimes with other things. I often wondered. You always hear about how your personal life can make you a better actor if you draw from certain things, right? Does having a role affect the way you are as a person? Can you come out of it in a different way? Absolutely, I think. In, in the same way that, I mean, the reason you make a movie is you hope that it affects people somehow. You hope they see themselves in it, that it makes them think about their lives, that they, you know, it, that's what art is supposed to do. When you look at your, your catalog so far, and you're still a young man, so do you look at that and say, I'm not going to choose this next role because I don't need to go into that part of me again. In the same way, some musicians won't sing a song that reminds them of a time. That's it, yeah. And here's an interesting example. Like Fight Club um, is is was a very specific experience. And then I made this movie that, that came out earlier this year called Down in the Valley, which is a totally a totally different kind of a characterization, a very different tone to the film. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that hooked me about it was that I felt in a lot of ways that it was very much a sister film to that. In the sense that it was, I also felt like it was about how the modern world mm -hmm. has just bent people's. I think you're both cowboys in both movies too. Yeah, or or certainly, certainly people struggling, people our age, like mm -hmm. feeling like the modern world has anesthetized them and struggling for authenticity, struggling for a sense of something that feels mm -hmm. like it's got guts to it or 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 that's real, um, and and even so, even though they were. Like in that case, the fact that it was about 
similar psychic territory didn't deter me. It kind of attracted me. I was thinking about your career when I was ta thinking about talking to you, and, and you know, you think Golden Globe wins, you think Oscar noms, you think all those things so early in your career. And I'm less interested in how it affected you, but I'm more interested in how it affected people's perception of you and what they expected from you after that. Well, the people who were with me, like, I mean, my, my you know, yeah. the people I work with, my partners, things like that, I wouldn't work with people, I wouldn't work with people who I felt were trying to push me towards something that served mm -hmm. a different set of priorities than my own. Um, and so I don't. That's why, you know, down to the cliche of, you know, my agent, who is a person I've worked with for a long time, we're very good friends, and he, you know, I wouldn't work with someone who, who didn't mm -hmm. um, hunt for the fight clubs and the down the valleys and get excited when they ran into them. If, if that, you know, if I had somebody who was pushing other things on me, I wouldn't work with them. So, so, so like the show Entourage is not necessarily your experience? <laughs> <laughs> I... Entourage is like this, like other planet. It's like Mars to me. Are you, are you good with being pushed into out of your comfort zone? Like, do you have to have people say because you reach a stage in your career where you can kind of do what you want, but that may not necessarily be the best thing for what for your art. Are you good with people saying, "Listen, dude, you're getting a little safe. You should try something else." Or yeah, yeah, for sure. In fact, I, yeah, no, I mean, people who people who, who push you that way are valuable. I mean, those are the people you end up gravitating toward, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, I think it's, it's always a fine line because there, you, sometimes you gotta have the humility to go, I would like to do this, but I'm not, I'm not the guy to do that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there, there is a line like, um, like this will sound, like I, like I love that movie, Master and Commander, right? Yeah. You know, like, and I thought Paul Bettany and Russell Crowe were just, off the chart great yep. in that movie. And I, and I watch Russell in a movie like that, and I go, if someone came to me with that, I'd be sorely tempted, but I am not the guy to do that. He's, he's uniquely mm -hmm. equipped to play that role, and it's wonderful, I think, when that happens. But, but at the same time, I definitely think that if I'm not, if something doesn't make me nervous, if I'm not nervous about whether or not I can even pull it off, mm -hmm. it's not gonna be interesting. So like you were talking about American History X, that was definitely a movie that I, I took a long, hard sit down with it. I loved everything that I thought it could be aimed at, but I thought, can, can I be that the guy I want to be in? But this, follow my lineage, your lineage. You did American History X. Russell did Romper Stomper. Yeah, right. So he went from that to playing the master commander role. Well, do you have a certain competitive nature within yourself that says, you know, I maybe can't do that, but I want to make myself? There's a certain aspect of like. You know this this whole the awards culture and this thing that's built up around the movies that's really, um, frankly, I think pretty ridiculous. It's like I, I the notion of like competition among actors is obscene. I mean, it's absurd. You know, it's like. But it's real. It's there. It's there. Yeah, I guess. But it's but I think it's in, it's projected by other people. I mean, I've 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 been an actor in New York for 16 years and. Like that's that's my tribe, you know. I mean, those are those are like the people I've been kicking around with a lot of those people for 15 years, and mm. there is nothing like I like more than going and seeing other people do great work. The other thing is, is that no actor who's got any sense of the world who's working could forget that they're a lucky actor. You know what I mean? I mean, there are good actors are a dime a dozen, really, and there are so many. There's 15. Uh, who are just as talented, who are waiting for that shot, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I think getting getting pumped up on the idea of uniquely gifted actors is just silly. It's like there's, there's you know, nobody can encompass everything. That's the beauty of it. Thanks, man. Yeah.